the world is heating up very, very quickly. It's getting pretty damn hot outside. I don't know about you, but here in Thailand, it's roasting. Now, I'm not saying that's because of one thing, but if we remove CO2 from the atmosphere, well, it certainly could cool down a little bit. Hello, my friends. Welcome to the channel. I'm the Electric Viking. It's great to see you. Thank you for tuning in. The world's largest carbon capture facility will store 9 million tons of CO2 every single year. So yes, companies are teaming up in order to remove CO2. Swiss carbon finance firm South Pole and Mitsubishi have joined up to announce the purchase of 193,125 tons of carbon dioxide in three projects. And at the same time, they are building the world's largest carbon capture facility. This is the largest in history. The next gen CDR facility, a collaboration between Swiss carbon finance consultant South Pole and the Japanese conglomerate Mitsubishi Corporation, by the way, Mitsubishi doesn't sell a lot of electric cars, mostly internal combustion. Their sales this year in China, the world's largest electric car market, have collapsed by 65% in the last three months. That's an epic collapse. Well, hopefully, this side business they've got running to capture carbon can capture some of the carbon coming from their own cars and some coming from other cars as well and maybe make them a little bit of money rather than be a money loss maker like their car business will be very soon. This purchase of CO2 by these two companies accounts for 25% of all carbon dioxide removals purchased to date, more than 1,000 years of CO2 storage once delivered, according to a press release by South Pole published last week. With an average target price of $200 per tonne, Next Gen, which is the name of these two companies when they're joined together, intends to make permanent carbon dioxide removals affordable for corporate buyers, enabling risk diversification through a portfolio approach. Now, $200 per tonne doesn't sound like a lot, but when you're taking away millions of tonnes, well, the figures obviously add up. Numerous carbon removal technologies are represented in the portfolio, such as biomass carbon removal and storage, direct air capture and storage, improved weathering, high temperature biochar, and product mineralization. For an independent third party assurance that the projects are of high environmental integrity and benefit local communities, all of the projects will be certified and validated in accordance with standards supported by the nonprofit International Carbon Reduction and Offset Alliance. The early purchase will comprise CDRs from the world's largest DACS project, which is being developed by 1.5 in Texas and is estimated to remove and permanently store up to 500,000 tons of CO2 per year once fully operational. What are the benefits of biogenic carbon removals? Well, long-term storage in of biogenic carbon removals has begun. There will be CDRs or carbon dioxide removals from the largest tech carbon removal project in the world called the Summit Carbon Solutions. It's a 5.1 billion biomass carbon removal and storage project currently under construction in the Midwest of the United States. This project will remove more than 9 million tons of carbon dioxide annually through the capture, transportation and long-term storage of biogenic carbon removals. The first high-tech biochar project, the C1, by climate technology company Carbo Culture in Finland, will also contribute carbon removal credits to the portfolio of these companies. The acquisition shows observable corporate interest in several CDR technologies that provide long-term CO2 removal. By 2025, NextGen expects to have purchased over a million CDRs, all of which will have to meet requirements authorized by the independent ICROA in order to guarantee the caliber of the carbon project. There's a little bit of skepticism around the, how these carbon projects are measured. How do you actually measure whether or not you took a million tons of carbon out of the atmosphere? How do you measure whether you took one carbon tons out of the atmosphere? That's the whole point of this independent company. 
It's meant to actually be able to prove whether or not you did what you said you did. Industry heavyweights Boston Consulting Group, LGT, Mitsui OSK, Lines, Swiss Re, and UBS are among NextGen's early customers. With this purchase, NextGen's pledge will make it possible to finance a variety of cutting-edge CDR projects and technologies that now have a clear path to market, setting a high bar for ensuring independent certification of technical carbon reduction. In order to achieve the 100 to 1,000 gigatons of carbon removals by 2050 that are necessary to limit global warming below 1.5 degrees Celsius, it is urgently necessary to scale up efforts to remove carbon from the atmosphere. This is according to the IPCC special report, global warming of 1.5 degrees Celsius. In addition to drastic decarbonization and emissions avoidance initiatives, such as forest conservation, we need technical and natural solutions if we are to reach net zero GHG emissions by 2050. The most recent state of carbon dioxide removal estimates that between now and 2030, an additional one gigatons of additional removals will be required every single year, nearly doubling the existing removals that are mostly reliant on natural processes. So we need to scale up removal of carbon from the atmosphere drastically. Now, even though this project is massive, 9 million tons of CO2 yearly is pretty trivial with respect to the Earth's overall atmosphere. And also, one gigaton after seven years is not even one part per million. 7.8 gigatons equals one part per million. Natural processes, unfortunately, are not the permanent sequestration needed. We are now at 420 parts per million million and adding 40 billion additionally annually. We don't just need carbon removal, we need carbon reduction. We need to reduce the actual carbon we emit every single year drastically. We can do this by moving away from fossil fuels quicker, adopting EVs faster, adopting electrification, adopting solar panels and battery storage, adopting wind generation. All of these technologies are so much cheaper than what they were 5, 10, 15, 20 years ago. So if we combine removing carbon from the atmosphere in an artificial way like these companies are doing with reducing the actual carbon we emit, it is possible we can stave off a pretty serious potential disaster. What do you think? Let me know in the comments. Thank you for watching. Bye-bye.